Voyager 2 spacecraft tweeted from outer space. Due to government shutdown, we will not be posting or responding from this account. Farewell, humans. Sort it out yourselves. And so worried is the Obama administration about sorting this out that it decided to control the message. The order has come down from on high that no U.S. ambassador can explain or speak publicly about this to a quizzical world. And so it's up to us, and we'll try our best. Well, hello, friends. This is David Vos, and it is December the 10th, 2013. How is everybody doing today? Friends, if you look on your screen, you'll see uh, where I've got Venus shown there, and below that, you'll see Ison. Now, that doesn't mean a lot to people. But now look at it. It looks like they're both just right there together. Actually, um, it's not. Ison is about 2 million miles from the sun at this point. It travels 7 million miles an hour or a day. And it was just a few hours from perihelion from, from going around the sun. So it was actually streaking towards the sun at this moment. And about mm, anywhere from 3 million to a few hundred thousand miles from the sun at that point. But less than 2 million. Now here's Venus. <clears throat> All right. Venus is, it, like I said, it looks like it's close. But Venus is actually a lot closer to our camera, to Earth. A lot closer. Um, the orbit of Venus around the sun is about 67 million miles. The Earth actually is about 93 million miles away from the sun. So it goes the Earth, and then Venus, and then Mercury. This comet is at the sun. Venus is 67 million miles away from the sun. So now... Venus is much closer and would look much bigger to our camera. Normally, anything that is that far away from Earth, if it was just like NASA had told us, oh, maybe a mile and a half wide, you wouldn't be able to see it. This thing is huge. So, yeah, NASA has been lying to us, friends. Let's watch this thing as it's going towards the sun. Now, imagine... The sun is not the blue area, the dark blue circle. It's that little round white spot in the middle. Now this thing, perihelium, goes around, comes out the other side. There's comet Ison. Now the center of that white bright spot that's Ison is probably about a fourth of the size of the sun. That sun... If you were to put Earth somewhere in that picture, you would not be able to see Earth at all. It would be smaller than the cursor. Okay, now that circle that's around the cursor is about the size of our sun. And when you put that up there, next to uh, Comet Ison, you can see that the Comet Ison is probably the size of a small sun or at least the size of like larger than Jupiter because if you put Jupiter on this picture you would barely be able to see it the sun is many times larger than Jupiter and that comet is practically engulfing the entire size of the sun there now I'm not saying it's as large as the sun because a lot of that is reflection and if you look at the tail at the very end, you see how far it is from one end of the tail to the other? That tail is so many millions of miles wide that it's just unbelievable. And the reason that there's two tails rather than one, this is baffling science. The reason is, friends, this thing has 25, 30, 35 different objects in the core. This is not just one piece. The largest of these pieces is bigger than the Earth. The other, I, I don't know how big, but it's huge. It could be bigger than Jupiter. The other pieces that are either orbiting this chunk or, or whatever they're doing together there, are many of these pieces are the size of Earth, Venus, the Moon. There's 25 to 35 pieces that people have counted, all in this little orbiting mass going around the Sun right now. 
NASA has been hiding this. They haven't, we haven't heard a peep out of them. And for 12 hours yesterday, they shut the entire, they, they cut the video so we couldn't see what was happening. Friends, there's something going on here. This is a huge piece. Look at the size of the V. The comet with its tail surpasses the size of our sun. The core or the nucleus. Now watch it. Look how bright and big that thing is. The entire white area or the nucleus is not just one chunk. I understand that. We'll all, we all can understand that. But it is glowing because it is the atmosphere around quite a few hunks of, and pieces, many of which are planet size. I don't know what this thing is, friends, but it's huge. And it is coming our way, no matter what anybody is telling you. It is coming in our direction. And the, this tail, which is millions of miles long, will go through the Earth's atmosphere. Now look at this. You see that? Now go back. When you see this next picture, you're going to see the Earth, the size of the Earth. Now, I, I'll be honest. I don't know how far that the Earth is away from the camera at this point, but I think it's a whole lot closer than that comet Ison is because we're near, our, our cameras are near the Earth, and that's how big the Earth is in that picture, in that shot. But the Ison, which is 90 miles, a million miles away, is almost as big as Earth there. Now, you can't even see the moon in this at all. And they were saying that Ison was only one mile or a mile and a half wide. The moon is, is like thousands of miles, a couple of thousand miles wide, 2,100 miles. And you can't see it in this picture. And it is really close to the camera, not 90 million miles away like this comet is. And this comet, 90 million miles away, is being shown to be at least the size of, a, of Jupiter. And that's my opinion. I'm just an observer. I certainly am not a scientist. I'm not an astronomer. So I cannot say for any certainty how big this thing is. All I can do is show you the pictures. Watch this thing. That tail is literally millions and hundreds of millions of miles long. Nothing the size of a mile wide rock could make a tail that long. Most of the time when you see any kind of comets going into the sun, they are just little points that you can barely even see. And these are huge uh, comets in past history that we've watched go flying into the sun and disappear. And these things are always just really small. You can't see them. When you look at this thing come around and you see how large that is, there just isn't any way on this earth that that thing is a mile wide. That thing could be a planetary system. I don't know what that thing is. A planet with its moons? A large planet with its moons. I did a, a video a while back where some people were saying that it could be even a dwarf sun. Um, a lot of people laughed at that. They thought that was ridiculous. Na NASA had, had debunked that, you know, months ago. And yet, here we are. Here we are. December the 10th, that thing hurling towards us quickly. And it becomes apparent to me that it's so much bigger than they are saying. You have to ask the question, why are they lying about this thing? Why are they not giving us some information? Friends, this thing is not going to hit the earth. The odds of that would be pretty, pretty low. It isn't expected to even hit the Earth. It's going to be a long ways from the Earth. But the tail is huge. And we're going to go through the tail. And there's lots of little pieces and debris. Some of the pieces in that tail could be the size of our moon. So anyway, friends, I just want everybody to be aware 
that NASA is lying about this and that um, we just need to be aware of it. There's nothing to be afraid of. You know, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that uh, a star will fall to the earth in the latter days. And um, it mentions a piece of, a, of something the size of a mountain that's thrown into the, to the seas and all the, a third of the sea dies. And that sounds really scary. As Christians, we know that we are going to go through a great tribulation. I don't know if this comet is going to do the things that the book of Revelation is talking about and usher in the time of uh, the great tribulation, or whether there's another comet that's coming after this one sometime in the future. We know the time is short. But as Christians, we just need to take refuge in the Lord. And before, you know, anything occurs that would be frightening we know that we have our lord to take refuge in we're not going to be afraid there's no fear in our hearts um god will take care of all of us and will see us through these times so have no fear friends this is david Bose, and you guys have a wonderful day and a wonderful christmas